So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have seen that uh, this conference is on incubation. But of course, if you want to incubate eggs, you have to produce eggs. And most eggs that we incubate come from broiler breeders. And if there is one sector in poultry industry which is difficult to manage, you all know, then it is the broiler breeders. So I could not expect a better introduction than the former speaker, no hablar español, but I could understand at least what he is saying. So he gave a perfect introduction to me for talking about the broiler breeder paradox. What do I mean by that? It's very simple. We selected broiler chickens for meat production and meat production efficiency. And the chickens that produce the eggs, the broilers, the future broilers, they are selected for growth and feed efficiency, but we ask them to lay eggs. That's the paradox. So we ask these chickens something different as they were selection for, selected for. This is the whole problem of broiler breeders. And I would like to explain a little bit more about that, to put it in a broader framework, and then to see and to explain to you why we think what is the reason for this problem? The first thing I would uh, like to introduce to you, and it was prepared by the first speaker, why can selection limits for growth and feed efficiency be reached? There are two reasons. The first one is that there is exhaustion of genetic variability. If there is no genetic variability, you cannot select further. And indeed, we go to more and more uniform poultry because we are selected, selecting them so intensely, so heavily. But if we look well, and all the information I got from selection companies is that there is no indication yet, neither from quantitative genetics nor from the molecular genetics, that there is exhaustion of genetic variability we still have a lot of genetic variability within our broilers. So we can select further for growth and feed efficiency for the next 20, 30 years, perhaps. But there is something else. And that something else is that together with this selection, and that was pointed by the former speaker, there are unwanted correlated responses that are associated with this continuous selection for production efficiency. Whenever we select within a species in a unidirectional way, we have correlated responses. Why is it a problem in poultry and not so much or very much less in sheep or in cattle or in swine? Why in poultry? Well, one of the reasons is, and I come back on that, is that in prolific species as poultry, the majority of the feed on a population level that we need to produce one kilogram of poultry meat is going to the broiler population and not to the broiler breeder population. That is only 5%. Yes? So, why should we focus on feed efficiency in the broiler breeder population if they take only 5% per kilogram meat that we produce? And therefore, there are unwanted correlated responses that are much more evident in poultry, than in ed poultry and turkey than in any other species. But I come back to that and I will illustrate it in a slide a little bit later. When we selected for poultry, in fact, the last 20 years, the further improvements for broiler meat production, as you have seen by in, the, uh, in the presentation of the former speaker, they were associated with a couple of dilemmas. There were three that are very prone. Uh, these three dilemmas is that if you select for fast growth and feed conversion, you change also the lean and fat tissue ratio if you do nothing about it. This dilemma has been solved. It was a problem 30 years ago. It's not a problem anymore. I will not talk about it. The second dilemma is that if you look at ponderal and energetic efficiency of growth and feed conversion, and if you select very heavily for